Bad Luck Dog is a poem by Dave Margotius from Saskatchewan. It goes this way. The bad luck that followed you like a stray dog from the edge of town moved into the house, sat on its haunches in the kitchen as you ate your toast and tea, watching with sadness you couldn't have known about licking its chops. The thing of it is that you love dogs, are always taking in runaways and cast-offs, nursing back to health that beagle crushed by a hit and run last summer. There's nothing you like more than to get down on the floor and smell the sweet milk breath of a puppy, its belly soft and exposed, as yours was, to the jaws of this black mutt with its warts and mange, its indifferent bark, its faraway gaze. Bad luck dog. It's from The Horse Knows the Way, a marvelous book by Saskatchewan's Dave Margotius. We are traveling together on the road home. I'm Bob Chalmick. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, I'm Bob Chalmick. I host a program called The Road Home on CKUA Radio in Alberta and around the world at uh, roadhome.fm, an internet radio station. And I'm delighted to welcome you to my cabin. I'm delighted to welcome David Dodge to my cabin and Green Energy Futures. I've admired this guy for years, does brilliant work for a, a good reason. And uh, it's so great to have you on my veranda today. Well, Bob, welcome to Green Energy Futures. I don't know why I didn't think of doing this uh, much sooner. I, I it wasn't time, David. It just, it just popped into my head about a month ago, and I thought, why don't we do a story on my colleague, Bob Chelmick, who works for the same radio station, has for many years. We've both been there for many years. Uh, and because he has his cabin in the woods, and it's solar powered, and this is this is as green energy futures as it gets, plus we get the bonus of the road home. It's awesome. This week we're visiting Bob Chelmick's solar-powered cabin in the woods. Bob produces his groundbreaking radio series, The Road Home, from here. It's solar-powered radio. There are several factors involved in my choice to go solar. Um, and uh, the biggest one is when I would drive west of Edmonton towards uh, the turnoff to go north on the Highway 43. You get close to Wobbleman Lake and the power plants that had been operating there for a long time, and still are, and they burn coal. And from 50 kilometers away, you'd see this brown line stretching from Lake Wobbleman east. And I wondered what that was for a couple of trips, and then I realized what it was. That's how we produce electricity. We we just throw our garbage into the, air, into the air and onto the earth. So I didn't want to be part of that. So Bob decided to power his cabin in the woods using solar, which was still pretty expensive at the time. Solar panels on the workshop roof. You'll have to ignore the, the messiness around the bottom of the workshop, but 3,400 watts and change of uh, of solar panels that have been obviously added on to over the years. And I'll show you inside the workshop uh, the inverters and, and how that ties in now to the grid instead of to a large bank of batteries, which were okay for the first, well, nine years of their existence. 10, 10 11 grand were the batteries lasted about nine years. Uh, the economics aren't there for battery use in solar. So connecting to the grid is a good thing Selling to the grid is a better thing. The cabin in the woods has a natural gas furnace, but it's mostly heated by wood. I don't know how many cords of wood we we burn in a year, but I I would imagine it's, I don't know, six to 10. This was pretty much full at the beginning of uh, our winter. We have quite a bit left over still. Uh, we have so many trees around here, mostly aspen. My favorite uh, firewood is actually diamond willow, hard, hard wood. For Alberta, it's the hardest we have. The original cabin was 600 square feet. Bob looked at straw bale homes, earthships, cob, and even cordwood construction, but in the end opted for a stick-built cabin. It even has running water. Running water. 
We don't have a running toilet though. I'll show you the composting toilet. We like the composting toilet for the most part. It has a 24-7 fan, a 12-volt fan that keeps uh, the air pressure in the right direction, so it never has a malodorous effect in here. It doesn't stink. The composting toilet never stinks. Managing the composting toilet is a bit of a curve. It's pretty simple in many respects, but there are some issues you have to deal with. I mean, shit happens, and, and you gotta deal with your shit. If you just dump it and let somebody else take care of it, like the world, like the environment, I think that's a problem. So it's really a good experience to deal with your waste. Self-reliance is part of living in the woods. For Bob, he produces his own clean electricity, draws his own water, cuts his own wood, and even deals with his waste. Bob's quiet cabin in the woods was the perfect setting and the inspiration for his groundbreaking radio series, The Road Home. The Road Home is extra ordinary radio. The Road Home is radio, I, I don't think there's radio like it. Um, and I hesitate to use the P word, but I'm going to. For people who haven't heard The Road Home and who have been brought up in normal schooling, poetry is a nasty word. I discovered the beauty of poetry when I was a teenager and started really reading it and exploring it that way. And I've always wanted to integrate it on radio because when it's presented as an oral art form, I think it really sings. I think poetry belongs on radio. It's not the rhyming poetry of our fathers and grandfathers. It is free verse which is, I think, very powerful and beautiful. It has an aesthetic, the road home has an aesthetic, that's for sure, uh, that's based on its poetry and its mix of uh, music. All right, then. I call him our favorite muskox. He's um, a mix of quarter horse and Belgian, but he's the hairiest beast of the horse variety that I've ever seen. He's a retired workhorse, he used to be a, a logger in, in the BC forests. The Road Home is about story. I think our lives are about story, and The Road Home is a way to tell stories in, in, in many different avenues. Uh, the music you hear has lyrics that tell stories. The poems are chosen because they fit with the lyrics of the, of the song. It's all dovetailed together to tell a larger story. Now the, the theme that we talk about on roadhome.fm is a quote from Jalaluddin Rumi from Persia in the 13th century when he, in an eloquent poem, said, the road home is home. And he was referring to the fact that we should not be living for some final destination on life's journey. We should not be living in the past, regrets or wishing for, I don't know, being younger again. But we should live for here and live for now because the road home is home. The road home is solar powered radio from Bob's cabin in the woods. Quite the contrast from the Bob we knew as the steady voice on CBC News. Yeah, making television, making video is a bit of a juggernaut, but radio, uh, this is a, a kind of, again, uh, the, the beauty of, uh, of the medium um, and that is it's I can do it all myself here uh, and I and that's why I embraced this you asked that question um, what brought it all together and I, and it's because I wanted to integrate the things I love in my life most living here in a cabin living out of the city living in nature making radio storytelling and painting pictures through that storytelling. And I say the best pictures, and I'm a photographer who has exhibited across the country and outside in Washington and places like that. The best pictures I make are on radio. Listen to Bob Chalmick on CKUA.com or roadhome.fm. For more about Bob Chalmick's solar-powered cabin in the woods, check out our blog, podcast, and photos at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. From Bob's Cabin in the Woods and for Green Energy Futures, 
I'm David Dodge. We have fun with this. This guy, Hafez, from the 14th century, Persia, Sufi master. This is the interpretations of Dan Ladinsky, American. But he's an oracle and has been used as an oracle, still is used as an oracle in Persia, in Afghanistan, in, in Iran, and uh, even by Queen Victoria was used as an oracle. So what you do is you say, you have an, an idea, you have a question of the universe, and you mull it over and then you open the book. The Stairway of Existence and Hafez talks to you. We are not in pursuit of formalities or fake religious laws, for through the Stairway of Existence we have come to God's door. We are people who need to love because love is the soul's life. Love is simply creation's greatest joy. Through the stairway of existence, so oh, through the stairway of existence, Hafez. Have you now come? Have we all now come to the, the beloved's door?